In this video we're not going to focus so much on a specific topic as look at some of the settings that you'll commonly come across in Nginx configurations. This will include configuring the main Nginx worker processes, setting buffer sizes and various timeouts. First off, right at the top of most configuration files we'll get the worker processes directive. And this tells Nginx how many processes or instances to fire up when starting. Now, because of Nginx's asynchronous design, there's no use in running more than one process per CPU core, and running any less will mean Nginx cannot utilize the remaining CPU cores at all. In fact, unless you have a very specific reason for creating fewer worker processes than you have cores available, this should always be set to the exact number of cores on your server. To get this number, you can use one of two commands. First, you can run nproc, which will simply give you the number of cores and nothing else. Alternatively, you can also run lscpu, which will print out a bit more detail and here show the number of cores under CPUs. There's an easier way though, and that's simply setting this directive to auto. When this is set to auto, Nginx will do exactly this and create a worker process for each core. Also, just remember that auto isn't the default, one is. So if you leave this out, you will only have a single instance of Nginx regardless of the hardware capabilities. Next, in the event context, we have the worker connections directive. And this tells the worker processes how many requests can be served simultaneously. So, if we have two worker processes and you have worker connections set to 1000, that equals 2000 concurrent requests to be allowed. Of course, bear in mind that browsers will almost always open multiple connections to a server, so immediately that number can be halved or quartered even. To really max this number out and utilize the CPU core to its fullest, you can run ulimit with an n flag and go with that number. Also in the events context, multi-accept will tell Nginx to accept all new connections simultaneously, or if this is set to off, to only accept one new connection at a time. The default here is on. Moving into the HTTP context, we simply set the server's default character set to UTF-8, and then a bit further down here we see a few directives all referring to open file cache and what this does is configure caching of file descriptors or file handles let's say a web server requires lots of reading and writing to disk then enabling open file cache will definitely benefit you next up we have some buffer settings first there's client body buffer size and this is the buffer size of the post received from the client so for example for form submissions Client header buffer size sets the buffer size of headers received from the client and large client header buffers which sets both the size and max allowed size of large client headers. This one in particular will sometimes need to be increased for WordPress based sites especially. Finally we also have this client max body size which sets the maximum allowed size of a request from a client. If this is exceeded Nginx will respond with a 413 error or request entity too large error. Below these buffer settings, we can define after how many seconds to time out whilst receiving the client body or client headers, and below that the all-important Keep Alive timeout. Configuring Keep Alive timeout is a bit of a delicate one as it will have a great performance benefit to the client, but will also occupy valuable connections from that maximum number defined by worker connections times worker processes. So basically, you don't want this to keep connections open for too long, Yet, you also don't want to be terminating legitimate connections. The setting is in milliseconds and sets the time to wait in between two requests on a single connection before closing the connection. For the modern browser, over a normal HTTP 1 connection, 300 milliseconds is a good number, but if you're unsure, simply keep this as its default. Send timeout sets the absolute time to close a connection in seconds. So no matter what happens, if the request is not complete after 10 seconds, in this case, then terminate the connection and send a timeout error. Down here we can see the standard MIME types included, and right underneath another types context where we can define additional MIME types. Most of the directives that I've left out here will cover in the next videos, including gzipping and fast CGI cache. But there's only one final very useful directive I want to point out and it's the add underscore header directive. This is an array type, so you can define multiple of them and it's a very easy way to add custom headers to a response. For example, here we're setting the X frame options header to same origin, which simply means allow in an iframe only if the domain are from the same origin. A very useful directive that you'll no doubt be using a lot. 
That concludes this video and also the configuration section of this course. In the next section we'll look at some of the neat features of Nginx including caching, gzipping and some optional modules.